Good morning. Um, something went wrong, wrong with our presentation title, so we're still going to introduce ourselves by name. My name is Mark Liang. I'm Sarah Wong. I'm Mitchell He. I'm Lauren Tai. And I'm Nicholas Strong. We have one person unavailable with us, Elizabeth O'Neill, but she is with us in spirit. And we would like to introduce you to the world of mushrooms, more specifically the kingdom fungi. As you can see, the major part of the mushroom is the thing people eat on pizza and pasta. It's called the mature mushroom, and it's also the fruiting species. It's what gives the spores. We took our focus on the mycelium. This is what happens underground. Mushrooms are decomposers, which means that they release enzymes through these mycelium, which break down anything organic in order to build up its body. It's kind of like how we eat. Now, our idea was that if mycelium has insulating, remediating, antibacterial, and renewable properties, why can't it have it in space? On Earth, the um, mycelium, once it's dried and compacted, is actually lighter and stronger than concrete, cheaper pr to produce, waterproof, fireproof, environmentally friendly, and biodegradable. Patents have been filed to use it as packing peanuts, drywall, and someone in Europe has built a bridge using these mycelium. Our idea was, if we could grow, do this in space, there are an incredible amount of uses along with the actual food itself, the mushroom. To begin our experiment, we created a makeshift incubator using a glass tank, creating a sterile environment and controlling the various atmospheric properties we were testing. Our saborat agar we made using potato dextrose to provide nutrients and antibiotics to inhibit bacteria growth. From our sponsor, Sporeworks.com, we received syringes of fungi samples, which were vital to our experiment. In the second part of our research, we developed growing conditions using rye grain and glass jars. Throughout this process, we used surgical grade tools when handling the materials and set up a clean room to perform in. To test for an optimal mushroom species to use for our experiment, we first started by picking three very common and well-known mushrooms. These mushrooms were the Agaricus bitorcus, the button mushroom, the Agaricus micromethus, the wild field mushroom, and the Pleurotus ostritus, the oyster mushroom. These three mushroom cultures were then grown onto a petri dish filled with a, a potato dextrose agar, which is a standard, standard media for growing the fungi. From our experiments, the oyster mushroom proved to be the best candidate under a limited environment and best to further experiment on. After two weeks, we selected the fungus species that grew the most, which was the oyster mushroom. Using a scalpel, we cut three parts of the gel and placed each cut into a different jar. Now, the jars contained cooked and autoclaved rye grain, which is basically unprocessed wheat. The rye grain has three qualities that make it satisfactory for the job. It can hold moisture well, it allows air to flow, and it is very high in carbohydrates and cellulose. We then opened the jars halfway to provide sufficient airflow, a vital factor in the growth of the mycelium. Our independent variable was the level of moisture in each of the three jars, containing 5, 10, and 15 milliliters, respectively. We then placed the, incubator, the <laughs> containers in an incubator and checked on the experiment every two days in the next three weeks. During the given time, the mycelium was expected to expand out 360 degrees, and the roots were to pierce the rye grain to absorb nutrients. However, we did not expect water levels to impact the growth of the mycelium. As you can see in our pictures, the petri dish to the right is our oyster mushroom. This shows an extreme growth rate compared to the other two mushrooms, the button and the, uh, the button mushroom and the wild food mushroom. The white clusters at the edges of the petri dish are the mycelium growth. As you can see in comparison, the oyster has the most. This made it best, uh, the best candidate to move on to our next experiment that Lauren was just talking about. The experiments including the jars filled with rye grains. This is a before and after picture of our experiment. As you can see, even though the mushroom was under limited environmental conditions, it still, glue, it still grew tremendously and shown no significant drawbacks. So what were the results of these experiments? Well, after putting the oyster mushroom spores into the jar of rye grain, we discovered that it actually grew really well. And we believe that this actually happened because the oyster mushroom is actually a very diverse species. In fact, on Earth, it's found in almost every single climate zone that exists. And this is because it's able to adapt to almost any situation. And in our case, it's able to adapt to space conditions. Now, because of this, when we want, if, we, 
if our experiment were to go to space, we would now know that it's able, we will now be able to isolate microgravity from the rest of space conditions. So if anything, any changes were to occur, we would know that it's because of microgravity and not because of any other space conditions, such as low light le levels and so forth. So in conclusion, our results have shown that the majority of factors we experiment on do not affect mycelium growth or catabolic actions. However, we, since we did not go into space, we need to um, consider two important factors, which are microgravity itself and radiation from the outer atmosphere. However, because we believe the protection in areas like the ISS, we don't believe this is a major factor. Also, because mycelium grows in a 360 degree direction and the fruiting bodies of the mushrooms themselves can grow in any location, we do not believe that microgravity will affect growing conditions. Some uses in space include the, um, it's a regenerating insulation and building material. As you can see, air and water can be purified with mycelium to remove bacteria and deadly toxins. This has been done on Earth using petroleum and other heavy metals. We can harvest the mushrooms as an edible food source, a medicine, and in order to, um, to, take, our toxic, um, to take our waste. It's been proven mycelium to grow in hair and other parts of our body that's decomposing. In space, this is, in space, this is good because it's cost-efficient and environmentally sustainable. It's also, well, cost-efficient. In, um, in the mushroom samples we used, we used about five milliliters, and by the time we were done, we had about two and a half gallons of full mycelium. We'd like to thank um, Mr. Colo, our teacher facilitator, and our parents for bringing us to DC. This is a wonderful opportunity, and we're glad to be in the heart of America. Thank you very much for our excellent presentation. And if you have any questions for uh, this group of researchers, please come to the microphone. So what gave you guys the idea to come up with a uh, mushroom experiment to go into space? Well, actually, it's a funny story. Um, we were talking about what experiments we could do, and then the wild field mushroom was actually growing outside of our school, and we were looking at it, and we were thinking, gee, we could harvest this. And as we were pulling it out, we were going through the entire species, and we realized that a lot of the mushroom is hidden underground. It's kind of a silent hero. You don't really see it, but it decomposes most of the organic material on Earth. If these mushrooms were to be affected by microgravity, why do you think this might happen? Um, it could be for a variety of factors. We don't really know because we haven't sent it up into space, but some reasons could be the transportation of enzymes from the mycelium all the way to the fruiting bodies where most of the nutrients are stored, also possibly because of the way it affects the growth. The main part is that mycelium's factors come in because in about one square inch, you will find 12,000 feet of mycelium. That's what gives it all its properties and strength. If this is impaired somehow because of its in space, we wouldn't be able to use it. Thank you. Thank you again for an excellent presentation.